Why, hello. So let's continue writing our novel together. Um, now that we've completed the premise and the score story skeleton, which put all the premise stuff into acts, now let's begin the short synopsis, um, which is supposed to be converting this stuff. I think I just brushed the microphone. Hopefully that wasn't bad. Um, into about 500 words. And they're like, all right. For example, your sentence for call to action might read, Ben gets a distress message from the princess and asks Luke to journey with him to help save her. But Luke says he can't leave his folks. That's like the, the, what the act part says, right? The story skeleton says. And now you expand it to the droid R2-D2 escapes and Luke follows him out into the desert where he is attacked by sand people. Ben rescues him and they hide in Ben's cave. R2 shows Ben the message from the princess where she asks for help. Ben shows Luke the lightsaber and asks him to come with him to save the princess. Luke knows he can't leave his uncle to handle the farm alone, so he says he can't go. All right, so we're going to add some more action. We're going to fill in a few details and we're not going to get bogged down. All right, let's see what I can do. So act one, Protag is sidling up to the queen by becoming her lady in waiting and boning up on astronomy as she goes. We see her hanging out with her friends, scheming and messing around as she plays with astronomy, as it is her deep passion. You know what? I can't do this anymore. I need to have a name um, for my pro tag. So I'm going to go over to fantasynamegenerators.com, and I'm going to say that the people... Um, let me figure out what kind of classification. Are these lizard folks? Ooh, lizard folks get names like Trousk, Guxel, Thrick, Trashushk, Uxli, Ugru, Yukoatok, Jujuzi. Okay, that's all very interesting, but those aren't working for me. Are they uh, dark elf names? Let's see, are, are these dark elf names? Erepnu Dugandra. Kualape Yordrash, Zunve Provar, Rukneri Guzirseth, Kodina Shulvu, Ubzist Shuldrir, Dolokna Digo, Velguk Ian Vrasith. Okay, these are a little long and cumbersome for me. So, are they. What are Mononongol names? Let's see. Igtok, Imlu, Katam. The Monongol is a horrifying vampire-like creature from Philippine folklore. It's capable of growing large bat-like wings and able to sever its body from the waist. <gasps> I have never heard of these. Uh, Ugwat, Emik, Yedlar, Igwi. Ooh, masculine names or feminine names? What are the feminine names? Hazip, Age, Uvi, Sizi, Yinya, Kuliki, Bahitas, Larnin, Tintia, and Vaskian. I'm going to go with this. Um, and our, our protag will be named Yinya. There we go. I made a decision. So, 500 words, this stuff. This stuff is probably already 500 words or more. So my act three stuff, I suppose it was all supposed to be one sentence each and I gave it paragraphs. So I guess I'll just take this and expand it a little more. Um, yeah, my story skeleton looks like my short synopsis is supposed to look. So I have already messed up. Now, I learned last time when I was doing this with the Speo number that I went too in-depth with my short synopsis, which led to a really long 
expanded synopsis, which ended up giving me way too many scenes. And now I think that book, The Gallows of the Sky, may end up being three or four books instead of one. So my goal as I write this short synopsis is to keep it brief. So what I think I'll do is try not to add more words, but try to make these sentences more concrete. Um, so Yinya goes through a series of trials to become the queen's lady in waiting. And we'll say new lady in waiting. Um, while Yinya spends her evenings studying astronomy, as it is her passion, she hangs out with her friends, scheming about how she can use her influence with the queen to up the odds that she will become the next master astronomer. Okay, so the, the initial act one part said, Protag is sidling up to the queen by becoming her lady-in-waiting and boating up on astronomy as she goes. We see her hanging out with her friends, scheming and messing around as she plays with astronomy as it is her deep passion. And we've converted that to Yinya goes through a series of trials to become the queen's new lady-in-waiting. While Yinya spends her evening studying astronomy as it is her passion. <laughs> that was a burp and a hiccup. You're welcome. She hangs out with her friends, scheming about how she can use her influence with the queen to up the odds that she will become the next master astronomer. All right, done. So the next skeleton is, just as the selection for the next master astronomer is to be made, Protag sees something ominous in the night sky, possible aliens. How will she assess and figure out how to deal with this threat while she is vying to become the next master astronomer against her foe antagonist? All right, so we're going to need a name for the antagonist. So back to fantasy name generator. I'm going to click feminine names and we're using the Manana gold name generator. Ulapi, Bimpuit, Baha, Iwi, Ugmatuin, Kingi, Lavi, Punuil, Ala, and Kilhui. We're going with Ala. Protag's name is Ala. And we'll change this to after a creepy encounter with the smug, powerful, in court, Allah, our antagonist. Um, Yinya soothes herself by gazing at the night sky, but she sees something impossible and after consulting her astronomical texts, realizes that aliens are coming to her planet and that they are likely hostile. I don't know how she learns this, but she does, just leaping into this conflict. Um, the problem is, even though this threat is both exciting and urgent and dangerous, the next master astronomer will be selected the very next day. Should she accept the possibility 
of failing to become the next master astronomer by revealing this threat and possibly be considered crazy? Or should she do the savvy thing and hold back this information until she has acquired her new position as master astronomer? I wonder how um, high ranking the position is in court. Is like the master astronomer the lead advisor to the monarch? Um, or a more low-level courtier. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, in any event, how will she be able to counter the moves of her uh, opponent, Allah? All right, so... This one definitely got kind of expanded. So the original was, just as the selection for the next master astronomer is to be made, Protag sees something ominous in the night sky, possible aliens. How will she assess and figure out how to deal with this threat while she is vying to become the next master astronomer against her foe antagonist? Has become, after a creepy encounter with the smug, powerful, and court Allah, our antagonist, Yenya soothes herself by gazing at the night sky, but she sees something impossible, and after consulting her astronomical, te astro astronomical texts, realizes that aliens are coming to her planet, and that they are likely hostile. The problem is, even though the threat is both exciting and urgent and dangerous, that's three boats, uh, the next master astronomer will be selected the very next day. Should she accept the possibility of failing to become the next master astronomer by revealing this threat and possibly be considered crazy? Or should she do the savvy thing and hold back this information until she has acquired her new position as master astronomer? In any event, how will she be able to counter the moves of her opponent, Ella? So, should she accept the possibility of failing to become the next master astronomer by revealing this threat ASAP and possibly be considered crazy or a manipulative sensationalist. There we go. Yep, that was me adding stuff. Beverage. This is instant espresso powder in a lot of water with heavy whipping cream and maple syrup. Cheers. All right. When Protag discusses the possibility of an alien threat, not only does she not become the next master astronomer, antagonist does. She is discredited, and no one believes that the aliens are coming. But then the aliens contact Protag, and she visits their spaceship. Can you hear my guinea pigs? There they go. Oh, they're so cute. All right. At the selection ceremony for the next master astronomer, Yinya caves and discloses her alien discovery. The court erupts into derision. Ala becomes the next master astronomer. Um, Yenya is discredited. The alien threat is disregarded. As Yenya licks her wounds, the aliens contact her. Not only that, they lead her to their spaceship, and she gets a tour. All right. There is so much passive voice in there, but it's just a synopsis, and I'm just getting this on paper. This is only an outline, so I will not go back and rework the prose of my freaking synopsis. 
All right, let's get into Act Two. A sympathetic courtier, formerly a wise general, seeks Protag out and says he can bring her back into the court fold if she passes three tests. The three tests will be one, two, and three. Protag fails each test and then succeeds via try-fail cycles, but eventually succeeds. All right, so uh, this is our um, mentor figure. So I've gone to the fantasynamegenerators.com, gone to Mananango Name Generator, and I clicked masculine names, so we get Gulad Lomli, Unsurag, Vensimul, Jicht, Yangatik, Yinsum, Emlog, Yotchombeg, and Gindid. We're going with Gulad. Gulad. Not Gulag. All right, so Gulag, a wise, formal general, now a high-ranking member of the Queen's court, seeks, pro t seeks Yinya out, uh, finds Yinya in her usual hangout spot atop a roof where she is gazing at the sky. That seems like something she would do. Um, he says he can get her back in the court's good graces by putting her through a series of educational tests. Once she has succeeded in these tasks, he says, she will have the savvy necessary to become honored at court once again. These tests are, and here's where I finally have to think clearly, so what are some tests that a general would come up with that would make you credited in court again? Um, the first thing I thought was, well, she should kill somebody. Now, how do you come off as wise? And how do you come off as credible? And how do you come off as someone who can bring others power? Wise, credible, and basically a kingmaker. All right, so test number one. Um, recite the entire sacred text at the next lunar dinner party slash ceremony. Huh. I mean, I don't know how that makes you wise, but I guess it would make you a scholar, at least in the eyes of the lay people, right? Um, test two, so we said wise, credible, and a kingmaker. So credible, um, maybe she could mediate an argument. A credible, maybe she could get a new credential. Um, yeah get a new credential making her a priest of the religion of this area. <laughs> this world is so fleshed out. So we've got scholar, credible, kingmaker, create favorable conditions for a low-level courtier to become a higher-ranking courtier. All right, all right, I came up with tests. Are they good tests? Time will tell. Um, it takes some doing and some failures, but eventually, Yinya succeeds at each of these. And this is what's 
leading us to our false triumph. Because as we know, the end of the book may or may not be a happy one. It may not be triumphant. It may be more of a tragedy, or it may be a darker triumph. So this is leading us up to a more traditional sort of win. And then things are, they're just going to plummet, right? All right, so Protag learns that alien spies are about to infiltrate the court, taking over the bodies of low-level courtiers in order to learn how human society works and how best to destroy it. Can Protag prevent them from taking over the bodies of her friends? The answer is no, she can't. And she's all, and it's awful. She's not awful. Uh, the situation is awful. Uh, the aliens in an attempt to recruit I almost said the name of my other protagonist from my other book. Speo is her name. The aliens in an attempt to recruit Yenya, who is an entirely different character in another story, um, confide in her, reveal to her that they plan to take over the bodies of low-level courtiers in order to learn how human society and biology work so that they can destroy the human race because okay uh, because why they want to take over the planet and make their own they have determined what is this ad i'm seeing that's odd I hope you can't see that. Can you see that? Okay, good. You can't see that because I'd hate to inflict that upon you. Because um, humans are a plague on the earth because they want to take over the planet because they're destroying all life everywhere um, because they disagree with the moral fabric of humans because the humans inadvertently destroyed a large segment of their population. We'll go with that. Because humans inadvertently, stupidly, destroyed a large segment of their population. So I'm going to go ahead and name the aliens now. So we've been doing the Mananagal name generator for our, our humans. What would be a good name for, let's go with Hydra names. Ooh, Jerua, Krongra, Zramzea, Geno, Janivas, Juviku. Okay, this is all way too hard to say. Um, fantasy race names. The Gilted Satyr, the Edge Knolls, Nether Nymphs. Okay, our ad. <laughs> Nether Nymphs. That's great. All right, let's go with Gorgon names. Let's see what those are. Thistion, Rustas, Chizaios, Vixoteus, Rezo, Hovios, Kivas, Triras. Nope. Um, Ifrit names? Firepower, dead shine, embership to death child. All right, new. Um, Lamia names. What's Lamia? Lamia was a gorgeous queen of Libya and mistress of Zoop. Zoop. <laughs> La Zupa. Zeus. Theris, Priasis, Ulysanthus, Zetios, Atharis, Sodobus, Alceus. I hate naming people with. S is at the name of their names because I. Uh, ghoul names. Mud Chaser, Carrion Watcher, Boulder Mall, Dung Grip. Dung Grip? That's good. Uh, imp names. This is hard. Zet, Jarma, 
Crookback, Zos, Zeb, Nebrox, Igneb, Kiaz, Elpot, Yik. I want things that kind of are easy to. Fancy names. The Anguished Girl, the Dark Maiden. Oh. Mm, Naga names. Loxish Dodges. Apocalypse Mutant names? Clumsy Oak, Silence Ghost Needle, Night Owl. Those are actually kind of fun for another story. Demon names. Comic-Con, Jornimoth, Vrogronath, Dangroron, Vozanad, Aralen, Agrikath, Dogron, Buggin. All right, so we're going to go with demon names for our aliens. The aliens are named, this is not part of a synopsis, but I'm just going to make a note. Um, the Boggin. The Boggin. <laughs> All right. Where was I? And the people they have selected to take over are Yinya's three friends. And now we go back to Mononoggle names. Mononoggle. 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 Feminine names. Wait, maybe one of her names is a. What am I gonna. Mailer. <laughs> Byloth Doosan? Um, no. Mavor Bugwat, Temley. Oh, I like Temley. Her three friends, Temley. Uh, Impet. I we can call her Imp. Impet. Um, and. Maldi. No, Inod. No, Maldi. All right. And Maldi. You know, Maldi kind of sounds like moldy. So I, I'm actually not going to do that. Let's go with, oh, Macy. Macy. That's nice. All right. Uh, Yinya tries to prevent the aliens from taking over her friends. First by talking the aliens out of it, and then by physically preventing the takeover. But the bogging prevail, and Yinya fails. Prevail and fail. Um, she grieves. All right, so ne the next skeleton thing is the aliens offer Protag a chance to have her own spaceship and crew and fly around the universe, charting the stars and seeing the wonders of the universe. If only she will refrain from preventing them from destroying the human race. Okay, so she's going to go on a test flight in the next skeleton area, so we'll not do that now. All right. By way of consolation, as the Boggin uh, tell Yinya that she can't stop them, they offer her her own spaceship. She meets the crew. Um, they show her their star charts. They show her territories they have yet to uncover. They tell her of the wonders of the universe. 
and they say that all this can be hers if she will only refrain from opposing them. It is implied that she has access to a weapon that can defeat them. So we're going to go up here and plant that weapon. Up here. Yenya guards a powerful weapon that has been passed down for thousands of years. And this weapon or type of weapon has been used before to kill many of the boggin. Aha! Planted. Yinya takes steps to hide her weapon even better. Okay, so I've just planted stuff for this weapon, which is going to come up in the, the, the last act. Um, so, one of Protag's friends is executed for treason, which they committed under the influence of their alien. And aliens show Protag her new spaceship and her friendly crew. And Master Astronomer threatens to have Protag removed from court. The friendly courtier general mentor dies via alien hand, and one of the friends tries to forcibly remove the alien host and dies, and Protag goes on a test flight in the gift spaceship, and it's also tempting, and it is also sad. Um, so we'll say that Macy, under the influence of her boggin host, tries to assassinate the queen and is executed. Um, the Boggin take Yinya on a test flight of her promised spaceship. Um, the astronomer, the master astronomer, Ala, threat tells the queen that Yinya should be removed from court because of her association with Macy. Now, Yinya, Allah says, self-servingly, is a threat. Um, the Boggin Take over the general, make him sabotage an area of the palace, and then kill him off. And then, what were the names of the other friends? I forgot. Where did I? Oh, we'll say Impot undertakes an ancient ritual and tries to rip the host out of her body. But the effort and the hostility of the alien kill her. And then. All right, so let's have the the test flight happen after all this because we need to keep the temptation on. When Yinya goes to confront the Boggin, they <laughs> can you imagine? Um, Oh, Yanya is tempted and sad. So the aliens engage in full-out battle with the court. It's a grisly battle with many deaths on both sides. Finally, Protag and Antag have it out during the battle. In the end, it seems that both have lost. 
the human race will be destroyed. Protag, who is injured, will never get to see the stars. I just added that. But then, all right. The aliens set up powerful lasers around the castle. Um, the army sets up defenses and tactical posts around the alien spaceship and the castle. Oh, they set up powerful lasers around the castle and force fields around the spaceship. The army sets up defenses and tactical posts around the alien spaceship and the castle. They duke it out. The battle is grisly. Yinya gets terribly injured. I keep trying to write Speo, who is my other protagonist. I gotta just not do that. Yinya gets terribly injured as she lies there. Alla approaches, also injured, and they have a mono, a mono argument and try to kill each other. They end up more injured and they lie on the ground side by side as the Boggin just destroy everything. Um, both Ala and Yinya seemed doomed to die in the destruction as screams all around, <laughs> there's no verb there, and castle being demolished, etc. Um, as Yinya closes her eyes, she sees the stars all around and mourns the fact that she will never see them again. Ah! Also, she's guilty and sad. All right. Protag gives the master astronomer antagonist a weapon that has the possibility of saving the human race. Then she bails, takes the spaceship, and goes to the stars. Okay. Then Temley shows up and helps Ala and Inya get back on their feet, uh, healed up somehow. Um... In a surge of brilliance that we have foreshadowed a lot, Yinya realizes that Ala should get the weapon that could possibly defeat the aliens in the Boggin. When the battle has subsided, with no clear winner, but heavy damage on both sides, Yinya crawls to the spaceship where the Boggin, where she promises to oppose the Boggin no more, and she takes her spaceship and goes up to the stars beyond. Bang! That was supposed to be 500 words. It is 941 words. I did that. I'm going to save now. Can't believe I didn't save before. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful and interesting, and I'll see you next time. Bye!